Coming to you from True Beyond Studios, I'm Dr. Robert Gaines with The Robert Gaines Show. Hello, here we are again, uh, Dr. Robert Gaines, and uh, again, for those that may not remember from our, our first show that's on the air now, uh, I'm the founder of the Victor Valley African American Chamber of Commerce, located in the town of Victorville, California. And I'm one of the founders and chairman of the board for the California Black Chamber of Commerce for the state of California. Uh, I'm proud to say that uh, we're a developing community, uh, just like the rest of our community. But uh, this show, we'd like to talk about some topics that we think is pertinent. Our wake-up call of what we as African Americans and black people in the United States of America need to be doing for ourselves to bring about change, improve our community instead of just complaining about the situations that we find ourselves in. Um, unfortunately, too many communities just complacently accept what's going on in their community and think that's the way it has to be or that's the way it's always been. That's our fault. We haven't studied and looked at our own history, how we've changed and created history. Uh, people talk about the Greeks being the founder of science. But the Greeks were still living in caves and eating with their fingers when we had universities in Africa. They came in contact again with the people of, from the dark continent and that's where they came across education and training. We opened their eyes and uh, it's time for us to open ours. So today we're going to talk about uh, what we think is a very pertinent uh, topic of uh, what are we doing as a people for ourselves to bring about change, to improve our position in the economic community or environment in which we live. Because right now we're not participating, we're just being participated on. And uh, so uh, Brother Thomas Lee is going to join me in this conversation and uh, we're going to be talking about some of the things that we as a community, um, if you have friends and you sit down and you enjoy having a conversation, uh, Instead of having a conversation about the problems, Nothing. you need to be having a conversation about how to resolve the problems and what you're going to do to fix them. We need to change what we do. And it's got to be about what we do, not what I do. Uh, everybody talks about we're looking for a new leader. Mm. You know, and uh, I look at you and I see a leader. You look at me and you say you see a leader. Well. I look at my community and I see a bunch of leaders. And I don't think we need to be arguing, fussing and fighting about who's going to be the leader. What we need to do is come together and let's lead together. Let's all of us support each other and make each other successful. Because if I can help make you successful, if I take the time to do that, wouldn't you say thank you and help me be successful too? Yes, sir. So, if that's something that we can just say between us two, how come we can't say it with you? We, the African American community, need to be concerned about us being successful. And now we need to start taking steps to make sure that happens. If there's two of you that's got 50, 60, 70, 100 dollars, then put your money together. Invest in yourself. Invest in your dream. And start making each other successful. That's what other people learned from our community at the end of slavery. When slavery first ended, what happened? We couldn't live in their town, so we formed our own little towns. We started becoming successful. We started supporting each other. We bought, bought, bought and purchased from each other. And if you made something, I purchased what you made. If I made something, you purchased what I made. And if somebody else was teaching, then we sent our children to them, and we paid them to teach our children how to be intelligent, how to be smart and educated. Correct? Correct. I, th I think that, you know, when it comes to organization, you know, uh, the family is, is the first uh, unit of organization in our community. And I think that once we, you know, work on getting our families in order, you know, each family should be looked at as a, as a, a community organization. A that contributing community organization. Because yes. first they contribute to their family unit. Yes. And then they contribute to the community in which they reside. Yes, sir. And, you know, 
a lot of times people have the fear that it's not enough to go around. But in truth, it's enough to go around for everybody. It's just that we have to learn how to work together and network. Yeah, absolutely. We can always ensure each other's success, but we've got to be stop being concerned about, oh, well, what's in it for me? Because what's in it for you is what's in it for us. We need to change that thinking in that if I'm going to do something for you or act like I'm going to help you, you need to pay me. Yeah. Our reward is in helping each other. I remember, you know, uh, you speaking on certain words like, we got to get rid of my, me, and I. Well, you know, it goes to how a person looks at them themselves as a part of their community. Um, you know, in, in the sense of family, you know, one of the most important things is knowing and learning how to pass down wealth from one generation to the next. And so in doing so, we have to look at ourselves as a, a part of one unit, you know, and to, to, to assure that transference of information and as well as wealth. Yes, and in the development of that, when we talk about the family unit, because actually the, the, the nucleus of the family unit is love. Yes. Then once you get past love, there's the family trust, the faith. Yes. We got that from God. Now if we can take that and relay that onto our neighbor, where whatever I can do for you, I'll do it. And if what I do helps make you successful, you'll be more than happy to come back and tell me thank you. And not just say it, but do something for me that'll help make me successful. And it's, it's certain fundamental things that, you know, there's sayings that we have always heard. You know, if my, my neighbor house get broken into, my house is not safe. And we need to carry that type of attitude. If, if there is a uh, discrimination with a neighbor's child, you know, my child, uh, it's a possibility to get discriminated against. So, you know, in the collective sense, we have to see each other as one and working for a common cause and a common purpose. Absolutely. And, you know, um, when you talk about, like, when discrimination shows its ugly head yeah. and it assails your neighbor's child, well, remember that old adage that uh, used to go around and say, well, when they came for John down the street, I said nothing. When they came for Henry across the street, I said nothing. When they came for Bob next door, I said nothing. And when they came for me, there was no one left. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the same thing when you say about you allowed the discrimination to attack and assail your neighbor's child. Well, it's not going to be too much longer before it comes to get yours. Yeah. You know, so when we talk about those things, we need to understand we need to stand up for each other and with each other. It's not about... I'm going to protect you, but then when they come for me, there will be no reciprocation of that support. We need to make sure that we do that for each other, that we do that for our children and our children's children. I, you know, you've heard me say uh, before in the past, before we, even when we were talking about this show, that uh, when I go out in a community, all my community's children are mine. Yes. That's because I accept responsibility for my children and your children. See, that's the way it was when I grew up. You know, I used to have to, a, a task that my mother used to send me on, and that was she used to give me a little package, a care package, to take across the Bronx in New York to my grandmother's house. Well, as soon as I got off my block the very first time, I figured I was out of sight. I was cool. Mm. I could do my little devilment, knock over garbage cans, you know. I see a window open. Can I stick my little hand in there and get something that might be cool? Well, by the time I got home, my mother knew everything that I did, every single step that I took, all the way to my grandmother's house and back. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, how did she find out? Because she was waiting for me when I got home. That's the kind of community we need to go back to, the kind of community that assesses and watches out for our kids. You know, now, when I was that age and I was doing those little stupid things, I resented those people keeping an eye on me. And I remember hearing a lady yelling out the window, Robert, I see you. I'm going to tell your mother. 
And I looked out, yeah, like you know my mother. And she did. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, you know, um, that sense of uh, social responsibility is important. Yes. And, you know, a lot of us don't have that sense. Yes. Um, you know, right now, I think in a lot of instances, we fear our children. Yes. You know, and uh, that should never be what it's about. How can you uh, wrap your arms around and lovingly care for your children when the whole relationship is built on fear? It has to be done with some love and some mutual respect. We need to have that back in our community. We don't need to have the high-fiving high and adapting and stuff, and then as soon as one person walks away, somebody's, did you hear what that mm -mm said? Well, you know, I, you know, as, as, as men, and especially as black men, you know, we need to have a male fraternity. Yes. In the sense of, you know, we have certain uh, standards, rules, you know, that. And, you know, we have one organization that, that's like that. That's 100 black men. Now, that doesn't mean that there's only 100 black men in the organization. Right. That's their title, is 100 black men. And they're all over the country. You know, uh, we talk about bringing about change. If we could get organizations like the 100 black men, uh, like the Urban League, the NAACP, to work with our chambers of commerce, business people, okay, reinvent, reinsert entrepreneurship back into our community, which is the basis for ownership in this nation, okay, we wonder why we don't get respect. We don't get respect because we don't own anything. You know, uh, I was told by an economist more than one uh, that, you know, if you looked at the African American community and our spending dollar as a community, if that was looked at on a world global level, we would be considered the seventh largest financial nation in the world. The seventh largest. Now that's impressive. Yeah, you know, I, I tell people that a lot that when you're dealing with the, the black world or, you know, the black people that find themselves in various different parts of the world, if we, if we learn to network with each other, we have a global network. And, you know, as global citizens, you know, in the time and age that we're in, we need to think global. You know, a lot of times, you know, we think of local, you know, but in essence, I think that what is going to, you know, give us the footing is to uh, participate on a global scale, in the global arena. We, we need to participate on a global scale in the global arena because the global arena is already there. Yes. Now, the only thing missing is us. Yes. Okay. Yes. We're not participating. But the other, the other half of that caveat is we need to develop our networking base that's trustworthy. Some place where we can go and get solid, concrete information and know that we're not dealing with some shyster. Uh, and unfortunately, Africa has the worst reputation of any, any continent in the world of having uh, these... Uh, people with all of these schemes coming off the internet trying to uh, steal the, the monies and fortunes of senior citizens, trying to get you to invest in this and invest well, in that. You know, I, I think with that is that, you know, a lot of times Africa gets the raw end of the, the stick when it deals with exposure. Well, this is true. You yeah. know, and what I find is uh, a lot of times what other people do that they talk about uh, smart business, yes. when we start doing it, it becomes criminal. So that's why we hear about what's going on on the African continent. But in truth matter, those people didn't start it. They learned it. Yeah, I, I think one, one of the things that is essential for us, too, is that when you talk about uh, economics you know, and markets, we have to define our natural market. Our natural market is our culture as a people. No one sells Chinese food better than Chinese people. No one sells Mexican food better than Mexican. African culture is our exclusive commodity. Except for the problem is, is uh, you know, even when you talk about African culture, uh, in this country, and 
and a lot of places around the world. I see everybody else doing what we created and making fortunes on it, and we're starving. You know, I think that's because a lot of us don't value, you know, uh, our, our, our history, our past, where we come well, from. It's, it's not, well, see, in order to value something, you have to know it. Yes. Okay, and that's the crux of the matter, is we don't know our history. Okay, and here on this continent, I'm talking about America. Now, uh, when I was uh, when I was living in Europe, uh, I learned things about African history that blew my mind. And then when I went to Africa, I found out that a lot of the things they were teaching about African history in Europe weren't true. Right. But then again, at least they were telling something about African history. When I came here, we were completely devoid of African history or African recogni recognition outside of talking about the dark continent, quote unquote, and the ignorance of the people, quote unquote, again. Uh, the most intelligent show that I ever saw was uh, Henry Louis Gates when he went back tracing his roots. Did you, you happen to see that documentary? No, I haven't. Oh, it, I thought it was beautiful. It's something that uh, every African American should see. Uh, he traveled through Africa, he talked about education, he showed the sites, uh, just like uh, Timbuktu. Right. What was Timbuktu? Okay, now I've heard the jokes, there's been millions of them about Timbuktu. Everybody assumed that Timbuktu had something to do with white folks. Yeah, well, you know... Uh you know, Timbuktu is 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 is, is kind of ironic and, and, and a little amusing. You know that that was an educational center in, in in the world, and people used to come from you know all around the world essentially to get certain knowledge and information. And so when they say you know Timbuktu, you know that was a, a well recognized you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, but it was more than just a, an education center. It was the financial hub of the world at one point. And anyone that thought about making money came to Timbuktu to find their fortune. Because that was the only place you were going to find it. Mm -hmm. There was no place else that was transacting businesses on a level even close to comparing to Timbuktu. So that meant people were coming to Africa, traveling across the deserts just to get to Timbuktu so that they could find wealth and achieve a, a, pin a pinnacle type lifestyle. Yeah, you know, uh, it, in, in reading about African history, it becomes, in a sense, liberating. Because, you know, when you receive your American education of the, uh, of the Negro, as they say, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the origin starts with slavery, and no one wants to be a slave. But when you go back and you, uh, you know, you see that your ancestors made, you know, uh, monumental contributions to humanity, then it's something to look within yourself and be proud of. Mm -hmm. But when you are told that, you know, your people have never made any contributions to humanity, you know, it, it makes you look at yourself like. You know, well, you know, that's just like that's why I say, you know, if we don't know our own history, yeah, and it's very important, uh, you know. One, just to make a point, one of the seven wonders of the world that's recognized in this country, because there's magnificent edifices around this globe that people just cannot ignore. Now, we've allowed the American storytellers to mutilate history when we talk about the pyramids. The pyramids were designed, engineered, created, and built by black folks. Uh, Egyptians are not all white people. I don't know where that misnomer came from. As a matter of fact, the current day Egyptians, even the light-skinned ones, are not white. <laughs> okay? yeah, yeah. Even though they try to portray them as such. Yeah. Uh, and, and the ancient pharaohs, most of them, were black or as they referred to in the day as Nubians. Yeah. So, 
just to, that, that's just to make a point that they recognize the edifice, but then they try to misconstrue the fact that we had anything to do with it by, by trying to imply that the people who created that environment and engineered and had the, the genius to be able to create and build those structures were all white people. Well, you know, um, when, whenever a story is told, always the victors tell the story the way that they want to tell the story. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, everything that, you know, brought in, in, in growing up, everything that is associated with Africa, uh, African uh, uh, traditions, you know, are considered negative. Um, and, you know, it, it, it just goes to reminding me how much you know, when Esau tried to steal his brother's birthright. And, you know, in the story of history that has been told, you know, Esau is trying to steal his brother's birthright. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, um, you know, we have to know our own story and we have to, you know, maintain, you know, uh, our own image. When anybody tell our story, it should be us. When anybody record our story, it should be us. Well, it needs to be. We need to be involved of, with determining who we are yes. instead of letting someone else articulate who we're supposed to be. And, you know, this, this whole thing is like, you know, I, I, I strongly believe that you can be, be pro-black without being anti-others, you know. Um, Most assuredly. I, I, you know, that's what's wrong with our history in this country. We've lost sight of what our goals and objectives should be because we got encased in the hate syndrome. Yes. We, we, we think we overcome our situation with the anger, but on I look around, all the, all the angry expression is locked up. It's incarcerated. So actually all we did was fall for the okie doke and we determined that this is the way we should express ourselves but all that did was open the door so that they can continue to incarcerate us. Yes. What we need to do is say, okay, that didn't work. Time to move on to something new, a different strategy. And that strategy needs to encompass us taking responsibility for ourselves. Not myself, but ourselves. Yes. As a community and as a people, we need to get busy changing our community. And, and I think that, you know, it comes, you know, with the network, you know, uh, we need to, you know, network one, with one another, not only in the sense of uh, I'm an African American, but you have, you know, uh, Africans that were brought to the Caribbean in slavery. You have, you know, Africans that was brought to Central and South America in slavery. And essentially, we are one people. And so to give us a, a greater footing, we need to be able to communicate with the various, you know, as they call the, the diaspora, yeah. you know, the black diaspora. Yeah. Um, well, I agree with you, but first we need to learn how to communicate here, you because know, we're not doing that. Yeah, no doubt. I, I think that in, in the progress, in, you know, you have to be, in the, you have to be able to multitask. Oh, yeah. You know? So you, you have to be able to do more than one thing at the same time. And, and not only that, we have to learn how to uh, uh, effectively plan for the future. You know, a lot of times we live in the here and now, and we don't think of, you know, 30, 40, 50, or 100 years from now. And I think that... Well, we're not even thinking about tomorrow. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> we, we, we don't look at what, is, what I did today, what is going to be its impact on tomorrow? Are there any consequences that I'm going to have to suffer? tomorrow for what I did today, yeah. you know, and we actually wind up waking up tomorrow and when we hear that, it's the police. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think that when anybody acts, you know, the idea of authority is, uh, is in the back of the head. And we have to acknowledge that we have our own authority as human citizens of this world to be able to uh, determine our own future, you know, with, without having to ask someone 
can we do it this way? Absolutely. You know, every people should be able to exert themselves in a way that will be beneficial to them as long as it's not the, at the expense of other people. As long as, and as long as it's legally and morally acceptable, why can't you do it? You know, and our big problem in a lot of instances is we're, we're sitting back waiting for somebody to tell us it's okay for us to do that. Mm -hmm. And we don't need anybody's permission to do anything. Yeah, I mean, even, you know, I know that a, a, a very touchy subject comes in when we're dealing with religion. Yes. You know, and how oh, to, sure. how to uh, I mean, it's just like uh, uh, polygamy, what they would call polygamy, yeah. having more than one wife. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in my personal opinion, you know, I'm not in a polygamous situation, so, you know, however, anything that two, uh, if you are adults and you choose to be in, in a particular union, that should be... The, the beginning and the end of that. It's your, your, your business in determining. You know, I was having a discussion with a person who was a lesbian extract uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, she got angry with me because I disagreed with the fact that uh, they're usurping the title of marriage. And uh, your union is your business. Now, I agree with the fact that you should have, if you're living together, you're a couple, that you should have all legal rights to a couple. Should have all legal access to be able to, if uh, you and I were, were a pair, then uh, I don't care which one's the male and which one's the female, but if we were a pair, then we should have access to the benefits of a couple. And I think they should have that, that legal right too. Yeah, but they it, don't have the legal right to, to tear apart the structure that everybody else already has. You know, and, and I know I know that is very touchy, touchy. Yes. Because when you talk about, you know, bloodline, yeah. and you talk about, you know, uh, 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 assuring a future footing for future generations, and, you know, when you're dealing with homosexuality, it goes to the core. Is this a union for self? Or is it a union for community? You know, and yeah. as as a community, you know, the community should has a sense of responsibility uh, 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 to itself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Where everybody should feel that you know I am responsible yes. for the the progress of my community. But everybody don't have to contribute in the same way. I, th that's true. Uh, I think that. And this is just my own personal, you know, uh, uh, view of it, um, that, you know, when you talk about manhood, womanhood, mm -hmm. you, you're talking about a level of existence where you are uh, uh, living to preserve a bloodline, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and, and in that living to preserve a bloodline, you know, uh, you're going to try to find a mate that is compatible with your views on how to bring this about. You know, as a family, I see a family as a corporate unit, you know, that should, you know, uh, uh, strive to expand itself, you know, so that it may have representation here in this world, yeah. you know. Now as, and in the future. Correct. You know, and, and but and, uh, how, how another another group of people determine how they want to... Uh, well, that's a free society. But I mean, that's, and that's up to them. Yeah. I don't have any business telling them that they yeah. can or they can't. Yes. You know, and so, but see, the, the, the point I was trying to make is that this person that I was talking to a couple of weeks ago didn't allow me to finish the statement. Once she found out that I didn't agree with that one part, that was it. Conversation over. Get out. Yeah. You know. So uh, when we talk about free speech, and that's what's wrong with free speech today, everybody says it's free speech as long as you agree with me. When you don't agree with me now, you, you need to shut up. Yes. You know, and yes. see, now we've gotten away from free speech, so speech is no longer free. Right. Okay? It's only free for those people that, that, that can yell the loudest to make their determination. Yes. And, but I don't think I need to yell or overcome anybody or, or, or put anybody else down to make my point. So that's why I respected her point of view and got up and left. Yeah. You know, as men speaking, you know, um, it should be the, com I mean, you know, it is. Uh, we should always have the conversation 
on the best way to structure our family unit. Right. And, you know, when we talk about, you know, uh, men, you know, we also should talk about the conversation should also be how to align our family units to prosper. You know, when you talk about community, um, you have, you know, in, in, the, in the history of man, man has, you know, had many uh, uh, civil laws, social arrangements. Always. And, and as a people, we need to discuss what social arrangements arrangements are best for us. Absolutely. You know, and, and looking at here and now, where are we at? We need to, you know, make some drastic, you know, changes and decisions, you know, to to transform our situation from our current to a better. You know, and and, and we can't just keep going on as yeah. the, as as the status quo. The status quo is yeah. definitely not gonna make yeah. it you know, we've been uh We've been demonstrating, we've been jumping up and down, we've been screaming and hollering, and we've been busy pointing a finger, trying to blame somebody for the situation that we're in today. And uh, my statement is we're in the situation we're in today because we're not doing what we need to really get out of it. And, and, and as far as, uh, you know, relationships, you know, man and woman, you know, uh, the, the reason why, you know, back in the day we had a more... Uh, we were more unified because we looked at our individual selves a part of a greater whole. Now we are so individualized and that, fragmented. Yeah, that you know we don't see ourselves even from a part of the, the family that we were born into. Well, we, we see you know, ourselves again. Though that relates back to understanding and having some comprehension of our history, because you got to remember now, back in the day, when you're talking about back in the day. Not only do those people remember, we had people back then who remembered being from Africa and how that African family, how the tribe lived and how the tribe cared for all of their children, okay? They had the family unit down pat. We've allowed this society to wipe that out for us. We haven't gone back and continued our story. We haven't told our children about our history. We've allowed this social environment that we're in to determine what our history or lack of. Yeah. And that's what our problem is. If that's why we can't find that uh, that consciousness of belonging. We, we're kind of like in, in a uh, what's it, like, almost like a black hole in space as far as our social environment because we don't know our history. When we understand our history and start incorporating it in our relationships and how we relate to each other, then we can overcome our social problems. Yeah. You know, and we need to bring those discussions back to the table. We need to have the discussion. Anyone listening to this show should be willing to have the discussion with people in their community to enlighten themselves, to understand the powerful impact that our history had on our community and what it still should have on our community today and how we should be coming together, exchanging our dollars amongst ourselves, spending with each other and making sure that our community becomes successful just like everyone else's. Yes. You know, and so uh, in spite of what anyone else might try to do to us, it is up to us to create our own salvation. And along that same path, part of that big part of that salvation is our belief in God. Whether you call him Jehovah, whether you call him God, uh, we don't. I'm not going to debate that. It's not up to me to determine which one of them is right. It's up to us to know if that belief carries. Yeah, on. I think that you know, uh, in the sense of uh, we have to, as a people, we have to have a common ground. Yeah, you know, to to work within and. You know, I often say that, you know, you know, God judges, judges a man according to his heart. And a man can say anything. What, what, what I read is, is the man's actions, you know. And so if, you're, if your actions are in line and it... That's the true depictor of what, what you really feel in your heart. Right. right. You know, because uh, 
one of the things which was the downfall of Africa originally was the fact that uh, there was a time when every man in Africa took a man at his word. When you said something, nobody thought you would lie because Africans didn't lie, didn't need to. When we got in touch with the other offshoots of our races, that uh, people conquered and took control by lying. And they found that uh, your gullibility, because you didn't realize that there was such a thing as a lie, made you susceptible to be able to be taken over easily or put you in a situation that got you killed easily because I didn't tell you the truth. So, <clears throat> but now we, we know that, we, we understand what lies are, we need to be ready for those. But at the same time, that don't mean that we have to lie, or that we have to be immoral. We need to stand up for our community, as our community, and with our community to ensure our success and our survival. I agree. So, uh, on that note, I think that we're about ready to end. And uh, to you, the people of the world, who, um, who might be interested in uh, carrying on the discussion, uh, we offer you the opportunity to come back through the internet and uh, send us a message. Yeah. Cool. You can go to trubianvillage.com and up under uh, uh, the Black Agenda and you can find uh, our conversations as to how we uh, are going to work together to better our community. Yes, and we would like to invite you to work with us to better our community. Thank you. Mr. Robert Gaines Sr. here. I'm chairman of the board for the California Black uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I'd like to say to you, establish the dialogue and start taking steps to cross successful Americans instead of doing it for someone else. Come back and listen to the future discussions that we're going to have on this Robert Gaines Sr. here. I'm chairman of the board for the past uh, 10 years now. Uh, I'd like to say to you, establish the dialogue and start taking steps to cross successful Americans instead of doing it for someone else. Come back and listen to the future discussions that we're going to have on this show.